There's something that happens when you're inspired to create. There's a momentum that takes over, a series of unstoppable events that take you from point A to your final production. When you're right in the middle of that momentum, you feel like time is standing still just for you. Being consumed by that creative space gives you a feeling of unparalleled joy. Yes, it is as dramatic as I'm describing. But then again, I did title my segment, How to Stop Time, so I am not the best person to define reality for you. <laughs> I can tell you that I experienced this feeling when I started writing songs on the piano, and I'd like to share uh, a shortened version of one of my songs acoustically. It's called Next Sunrise. I'll show you how to stop time The best thing that can happen to you when you're creating is to choose to get stuck, to find difficulty in implementing an idea that you have. When you want to get unstuck, you have to learn something new. And what happens to time then? It's the opposite of standing still. It doesn't stop for you. You become painfully aware of how slow it is, or it's so fast and it speeds you right by and you feel left behind. But this is a good thing. And it's a good thing not just because you're learning something new to get unstuck, that direct benefit. There's also something that I'm going to call side effects. There's something that happens to your brain. It gets rewired in the creative process. Here's a story. So I had a friend who suggested that my music style and my singing would go well with Arabic lyrics. Having lived in the US most of my adult life, I was more comfortable writing in English. Um, but Arabic is my native tongue. I love the idea. I was intrigued by it, and I wanted to find a way to sing in Arabic, but I wanted my own personalized style, my own way of expressing in Arabic. So I decided to try. Um, as we all know, Arabic is one of the easiest languages in the world. <laughs> I started writing and co-writing, and I experimented. I scrapped, and I procrastinated. And in the end, I ended up releasing my first two Arabic songs this year. And the direct benefit of that process of feeling the struggle of learning something new was not just the song release. It also affected the way I approach music. It unlocked new ideas for me in how I approach melodies and arrangements. 
So that's what I mean by side effects. Um, I'd like to share with you uh, a short part of one of those songs. It's called Al Maskun. I'm going to take a quick sip of water. It's called Al Maskun, which translates roughly into uh, inhabited heart, but also haunted heart, because drama. <laughs> Sometimes the obstacle to your creative process can be something as simple as campfires. I really didn't like that I couldn't take this instrument, which I love, to campfires, carry it on my shoulder casually and share music with my friends. So I decided um, at the age of 25 that I should teach myself the guitar with the purpose of <laughs> learning all my old songs on guitar. Hearing this, you'd think that I go camping every weekend, but it's more like every few years. So the purpose of this was, was obviously a bit larger. I wanted mobility. I wanted be, to be able to take music with me anywhere I went. Also to campfires two years from now. <laughs> what ended up happening was that I did learn the guitar, but very similar to the language exper experience, I ended up writing new songs on the guitar, and to this day I can't play any of my piano songs on guitar or guitar songs on piano. So here's a, a song called Brand New. This is very graceful and awkward. <laughs> Thank you. You are the sunset, and I am the sky. You steal my colors to be the moon to my night I catch my breath when you lean in past all the lessons learned and all reasoning like song
about a year and a half ago, I really just like language and the guitar. I chose to get unstuck again and learn about electronic music and the technology of music production. It took me so far out of my comfort zone that I ended up on a different planet. But this planet had tools. It had the tools that I needed to shape my songs, shape my sound, to know what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it. And this, for a musician, is extremely important. For the record, I'm not completely unstuck in this phase. I'm still in the learning curve. So I see the timeless joy at the end of the tunnel, and I hope it comes with a lot of catch-up on sleep. But uh, I feel my brain being rewired in the process. I cannot wait to go from the learning to the creating, where the focus is just creating. So as you struggle via campfires or language or planets, and you find your way back to that creative space, you, you figure out what you're really passionate about. You focus on that passion. And when you come back, that space has changed. It's a little bit larger and sometimes has more depth. And that's because the creative boundaries of it have expanded when your brain gets rewired. It's like coming home, right? But your house is now a palace with three or four pools in the background, in the backyard. If I were to ask you, as whatever you do, if you're a filmmaker or a writer or a programmer, uh, whatever it is that you do, what is the next level that you know you are meant to explore creatively? And why have you been avoiding it? Those are the things I can offer as takeaways from making music, which is find those answers, understand your pace, and eventually find your way to stopping time. Before my last piece, I would like to uh, demonstrate a little bit how fun technology can be. Closest, that's the closest I'll ever, I'll ever become to becoming a drummer. Right, and perhaps now at this point you want to add some bass. A vocal effect and now some chords. Yeah. 